Um, I am going to post this video of how to run a simple experiment inside of Weka. So we have here open uh, Weka. You can see the interface in the upper left. And you also see our Canvas class homepage here on the right. So you can see at the top of the homepage some announcements that hopefully you are aware of. And if you scroll down, you can see the unit for week one and underneath the supplementary readings that are um, available to you to be reading uh, this week. You can see the slides from Tuesday's lecture and underneath that is a data set. And that's what I'm going to use in this little demo of how to run an experiment. It's a CSV file and you can download it. And if you open it, it's going to look like this file here that you see. We've got our columns that are the features in our data set and rows, which are our instances, as we have said. And in class, I will have talked a little bit about, you know, what actually is this data set. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about the content here. It's more about how you would run an experiment. So you'll run the experiment in the Explorer, Weka's Explorer, which you will have read about in chapters 9 and 10, which are pretty much a user's manual of Weka. And you don't want, need to read like every word in those two chapters. What you need to do is browse through them, get familiar with where you would find information on how you do things in Weka, because you'll want to be able to refer to that throughout the semester. Okay, we're gonna use Weka's Explorer. We're gonna open up this file and so uh, when you open it, um, on my computer, it goes straight to my documents folder, but that's not where I want to be. I want to go to my downloads. And I'm gonna tell it to look for CSV files. And lo and behold, I find this opinion poll data set. When I load it, I can see a list here on the left of all of the attributes that are in this file. And on the right, I have ways of looking at some summary statistics for each one of those attributes and also how it varies with another attribute. So here, um, it uh, has, has picked, to begin with, uh, the class value as the one that we're going to look at how uh, it varies with some other selected feature. Um, and so let's first uh, figure out based on this interface what um, what do these colors mean? So it's showing this winner uh, um, attribute. This uh, data set is about uh, predicting what was the outcome of an opinion poll, and these opinion polls were all about a presidential a presidential election. If you know hypothetically, if so and so ran against so and so, who would win, a Republican or a Democrat? So if you look at it, if you select this, you can see Democrat and Republican. The first value, there are 69 of those instances, is Democrat. So that would be the first bar, and it's all blue. And so blue, the color, represents Democrat. Um, and a Republican is the second one, so the second bar represents those instances that are Republican. Now, the reason why both the bars and the color represent the same thing in this case Republican versus Democrat is because I've selected winner in the first um, selection area where I've listed all of the features. And I've also selected it here on the right in the pull down menu. Now let's say what I really wanna know is how does opinion poll source vary with um, the winner? How do they vary together? Um, and so for that, I'm going to select poll source and you'll see here there are 23 distinct poll sources. The first one is Newsweek and so forth. For each one of them, we can see uh, how many instances in the data set have the va that value. Okay, so you know that there are 21 instances that have Newsweek. And because this one is listed first, the first bar in the histogram refers to that poll source. And you can see how the color is distributed. So most of this, these 21 instances were uh, where a Democrat won. But in the second column, which represents this Rasmussen report, you can see that more Republicans 
won those opinion polls than Democrats. And for the third one, which is time, there, uh, all of them, there were only a few, but all of them were uh, where a Republican won. So you can see here that poll source is a very biased variable. It gives you a lot of traction towards making a prediction about the winner because some of these poll sources were very heavily skewed in one direction and others were very heavily skewed in another direction. So if you know the poll source, you know a lot about who won. It's not true uh, for all of these. For date, for example, well, some of these um, are relatively heavily uh, skewed in one direction or the other, but there are so many different um, dates. Um, if you um, know who the Democratic candidate is, um, it seems that uh, regardless, um, more of the time, um, a Republican one than a Democrat. But if you know who the Republican candidate is, that's not the case. Here, uh, if you know that, who is it from the Republican side who's running, you can tell whether a Republican was more likely to win or a Democrat was more likely to win. So it's more valuable for making a prediction to know who the Republican candidate is. Knowing who the Democratic candidate is doesn't help very much. Okay, so that's kind of how you would interpret these representations. What we really want to do is run a simple machine learning experiment. So here we are on the classified tab. We're going to select a, a machine learning algorithm. We want one that's going to be able to distinguish between values of a, no, a nominal attribute, which is the winner, so Republican versus Democrat. We're going to pick J48, which is a decision tree learning algorithm. We're going to keep the test options at their default values. And we want to predict winner, so we're going to leave that pull-down menu where it is. Now if I click Start, I have run uh, an experiment. And there's a lot of information that it, it gives me about, the, uh, about what was run. So let's start from the top and scroll down. You can see here that it called J48, and it's giving you some indication of the command line parameters. We're not going to dig too deeply into what those parameters mean yet this early in the semester. You can see that there were six attributes that it used. And, and that's actually the entire set of attributes that's in this data set. And it used tenfold cross-validation. That was the default setting for test options. Now, apart from running uh, cross-validation, which I'm going to talk about in the lecture, what does that mean that it did? That's how it's evaluating this uh, method for building models. It's not actually evaluating a model per se. What it's evaluating is the way the model is being built. It's being built with J48 applied to a kind of data. Now. We're going to get um, some indication of how good that was. But we also want to take the data that we have and build a model, which we will use. And so the first thing that it shows you is that actual uh, model. So essentially what it's doing is it's making all of its, it's a very flat tree. Um, it doesn't look very tree-like, does it? If I want to see the actual tree, in more of a tree-like form, I can right-click over in this result list and look for visualize tree. And now it's going to bring up a tree. Now if I make this a little bit bigger, and if I right-click and then fit to screen, I can see a little bit better. Uh, if I do auto scale, I can see a little bit better. It's a little hard to see, but I can move this tree around. So it's a very flat tree that it's building from this data set. Um, let me just close that. OK, so here you can see it in text form. Um, and you can see that uh, there were a certain number of instances that were classified in each of these uh, branches. And the number that's after the slash is how many of those were classified incorrectly. You can see that in every case, if there's only one number that's 
how many were classified that way, and there were no errors. So more often than not, on every one of these branches, it was correct to use the Republican candidate. We already said it gives you an awful lot of leverage. And so once it split uh, based on that, then it didn't find much additional traction um, from the um, remaining features that it had. And so uh, that's why the tree is so flat. Um, and so um, uh, um, we have uh, 12 leaf notes, one for each of these Republican candidates, and the tree altogether has uh, 13 notes because there's, there's the root node and then uh, the 12 leaves. So if you scroll down a little bit more, you can see that there were 197 instances that were correctly classified. That's a, a little over 86% overall and 31 that were incorrectly classified. It also gives you some other performance metrics. And we're not going to talk in great detail about what those mean today. Uh, underneath it, we also have a category by category way of thinking about the performance. Again, we'll talk about that in a subsequent lecture. But I do want to point out this confusion matrix. You can, and we're going to look at a lot of confusion matrices throughout the semester. So you can see here that each row is labeled with a value for the class value. So Democrat and Republican. A is Democrat, B is Republican. And we've got the same labels for the columns. So here it just lists A and B, but we already know A represents Democrat, B represents Republican. So this upper uh, left-hand corner is A and A. So that's things that were actually labeled in the data set as Democrat and the model also classified it as Democrat. So these were correctly classified. But here we have ones that should have been predicted as Democrat, but the classifier uh, predicted it as Republican. So these were incorrectly classified. Uh, similarly, 154 examples were Republican, and they were classified as Republican, so they were correctly classified. But these five, they were incorrectly classified. They should have been labeled as Republican, but they were labeled as Democrat instead. So the downward diagonal are cells in the confusion matrix that represent correct classifications. And all of the other cells are off-diagonal cells. Those are our error cells. So we've run a very simple experiment. We have our performance, uh, which you can see in the confusion matrix. You can also see it in these other metrics, including percent correct, which is very easy for us to understand, um, and these other metrics, which we'll talk about in greater detail in subsequent lectures. But in addition to the outcome from the cross-validation experiment, which is what you see, starting here in uh, underneath stratified cross-validation, which includes all of these performance metrics and the confusion matrix. Above that, what we had looked at was the decision tree. That's not from the cross-validation. It's just from having run uh, the model, uh, having run the algorithm over the whole data set to get what would be a model that's the best model that comes out of the search to um, instantiate that form that goes along with decision trees. So this is a simple experiment. Um, we will be working with Weka throughout the semester. We'll talk about far more complex things that you can do with it. But for the assignment, you're going to have to run an experiment analogous to what I have shown you here.